forward on this. Okay, so welcome to the Perfect Foods Recipe class, one of the first of the Wellness Wednesday community gatherings. And today we are talking about recipes and I'm bringing up our ebook, Microgreen Smoothie Recipes, because this is a very um, simple way to make recipes um, and make meals. And I believe that one of the issues that we have is like, how do I quickly put together a meal on the go when I'm so busy? So to me, smoothies are a no brainer because it's really easy. You just put some fruit and some greens and some liquid and maybe some ice into your Vitamix or into your Nutribullet, whatever it is, blend, 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 pour it into a Mason jar, cap it up, put it under the sink, put some water under it, shake it around, dip it out, put it back onto the counter and call it a day. You don't even need to scrub it clean like the whole process can take you five minutes from beginning to end. There's not that many things that you can say that only take you five minutes from beginning to end, but smoothies. And the thing that's really special about microgreen smoothies is that there's not that many smoothies that are as nutrient dense as microgreen smoothies. So when it comes to your biggest bang for your buck for the most amount of energy that and nutrients that you're getting for the least amount of time and effort, I would say microgreen smoothies are the pinnacle of all of that. Y'all with me? Yes. Yes. Woohoo, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, hey there, Ross and friends. You know who we are. We make microgreen smoothies every morning. That is very true. There's almost never a, a morning that I don't make a microgreen smoothie. Um, why we love microgreen smoothies, they're packed with protein and nutrients. Yeah, I give a little bit of, I bet you didn't know that they can have up to 100 times the nutrients as the adult plant, the microgreens. They're fresh and raw vegan. So you don't need to use the powders that there, there's a lot of powders. You don't know where those powders are coming from, uh, where the ingredients in the powders are coming from and what fillers they have. I think that's a big fear not to get too crazy. Cause you know, that's not my vibe. I like people to be not really anxious about their food, but I have heard a lot of feedback from customers that told me they really prefer having the fresh raw ingredients versus having powders because there's a lot of fillers in these powders and you don't know what's in them and it makes it a lot less clean. Also the powders are, they're grainy, their, their taste is not as fresh. There's a lot of reasons why I really prefer fresh to powders, but the biggest reason is that it's fresh and it has the enzymes in it. Nothing is ever going to compare to um, a fresh, a, a fresh, fresh superfoods versus the powders. One really quick example that I always give just to keep that in perspective is when you're making, um, when you're making a, a, a fresh guacamole or, or a fresh recipe, even a cooked recipe with garlic, think about how much um, garlic powder you need in order to make it taste like fresh garlic. It, let's say you're out of fresh garlic and you're like, oh man, I need to replace my fresh garlic with garlic powder. Impossible. You can never make it taste the same as fresh garlic. And the same thing goes for fresh superfood powders. It, it's never gonna be the same as actually having the fresh green. So just keep that in mind. Um, not to say that you should never have those powders because on the go, they can be good. But as long as you have access to the fresh greens, there's nothing better. And we know the way that it makes us feel seriously. Takes five minutes to make. Um, maybe now I won't always be late. Just kidding. Maybe I will always be late no matter what. If you're a late person, you're a late person. <laughs> um, quickest cleanup. I'd rather play outside than clean up. Am I right? Satisfying and filling with this much nourishment. These smoothies can fill me up for half the day, refreshing and yummy. Well, you'll have to try it yourself. Energizing. It's truly an out of body feeling. I wonder who wrote this <laughs> not to be dramatic, but I feel like I'm flying with energy. And number eight can grow sprouts yourself. Um, and it's true. You can easily grow your sprouts at home. So if it's not affordable for you to get microgreens from us regularly, or if you're on a journey, really wanting to do this full time, then you can supplement, um, you can supplement either you get stuff from us and you grow it yourself or you grow everything yourself and every once in a while get stuff from us, whichever, but you can grow these sprouts yourself. And I will have more classes on that. So what are microgreens? Um, these are sunflower microgreens, as many of you know, put a one in the chat if you've had sunflower greens and also share what your favorite microgreens are. Is it broccoli? Is it sunflower? Is it pea? Is it the color mix? Is there one that you want to try? Do you want to try cilantro or arugula? Have you tried all of the ones that we've had? Is there one that you want us to grow? 
Um, yeah, what questions do you have about microgreens? Microgreens are the 10 to 14 day old babies of the plant concentrated in nutrients needed to grow the adult plant. At this stage, they are high in protein and nutrients and are a great resource for vegans and raw vegans when wanting to get a large amount of nutrients in with little chewing or prepping. And you don't have to be vegan or raw vegan to want sprouts also to want microgreens. So if Aaron's listening, he's going to want to know why I just said sprouts. Who here knows what the difference is between sprouts and microgreens? Anybody want to be brave? This is an advanced yeah. Can you hear me? Um, uh, Koshua, let's hear it. Yeah. Um, the difference is that microgreens um, are green. Because, um, <laughs> okay, like um, when I started doing sprouts, I did mung bean sprouts and, and lentil sprouts, and those are sprouts. But, and, but then when I added um, alfalfa, okay, so alfalfa has to be, once it's sprouted, you have to give it some light so that it turns green. And so therefore it's a microgreen. I, that's what I think. Right. So you put know. it in, yeah. So you put it, the sprout is about like three to five days old in without soil. So that's the lentil, yeah. the mung bean. And then you take those sprouts, not yeah. the five day old one, but like the two or three day old one, you put those sprouts into soil on top of soil, um, leave it in the dark for a day or two, then put it under light. And then it roots into the soil and it grows up, um, with the light and it gets all these extra minerals from the soil, extra chlorophyll from the light. And it's more like a 10 day old plant versus a sprout, which is like a three day old plant. So anyway, just a good little oh. discussion. <laughs> Thank you, Akosha. Excellent. Okay. I, I don't put my, my, um, oh goodness, go ahead. alfalfa. I don't put it in soil. I just put the jar in the, in the sunlight for a couple of days and it turns green and then I eat it. So that's still a sprout, I would say. That's still oh, a sprout. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, right. This is so, can I interrupt you again? Yeah, Cause this please. is really interesting to me. So the sprout, like when we made the sprouts on the cleanse, mm -hmm. we, you ate the whole thing, but when you order the sunflower, uh, sprout, uh, microgreens, there's no seed left. Mm -hmm. So is that part of the difference? Like, let's say I wanted to sprout sunflower seeds and the little tail comes out and then I say, Oh, that's my sprout. So I can eat that. I can eat the seed with the little tail. But then if I wait, where and where, I put it. Where does it go? Aaron? Aaron's here. <laughs> Aaron can answer you. I'll answer you. Okay. <laughs> Thank so God. Aaron, when, I don't know it, how I would answer. <laughs> when it comes to sunflower. So sunflower, not, not all seeds are, are, are quite the same. Some seeds have an exterior coating called a hull like the hull of a ship. And this exterior coating is sometimes edible and sometimes not. In the case of sunflower, it's not really edible. It's kind of like a woody coating. If you ever see the black hulls inside the sunflower microgreens, they're not really fun to get in your mouth. So um, <laughs> you usually you have to wash the greens and to try to get rid of them as best as possible before you, you know, make your salad or what have you. So you can make sunflower sprouts as opposed to microgreens, but in order to do that, you would need hulled sunflower. So the same kind that we um, that we send you, like raw hulled sunflower seeds. That when we when you're on the cleanse, we send you a little bag of it. You just ha you ta you add it on top of your salad, and it's like uh, it looks different from the sunflower seed that you might get in the store that you have to crack open with your teeth, and they're they're usually roasted but that one has the hull these are unhulled ones if you sprout the unhulled raw one that would have a little bit of a tail and you could eat those just like um lentil sprouts or mung bean sprouts that would be a true sunflower sprout just a couple of days of growing uh, of of growing the unhulled sunflower seed but if you grow the one with the hull you're not going to be able to eat it, really. You kind of have to grow that into a microgreen. Does that make sense? Uh, y sort of. So then that means that once it's once it grows, because those are pretty long. They're like four inches long. Those, 
is does a microgreen not become a microgreen unless it's in dirt? Some people would argue that. Um, okay. One of one of the distinctions is usually that you cut the you cut a microgreen. So you separate the roots from the stem and the le and the and the cotyledon leaves. Those are the the, the little leaves at the top of a of a microgreen. So by cutting it and separating the roots from the stem and the leaves, that usually makes the distinction between a microgreen versus when it's a sprout, you eat the root and sometimes there's like the seed embryo, let's call it. There's like the seed embryo and the little root tail coming out of it. That's more like a sprout. Okay, this is the last question I'm going to ask you and then I'm going to shut up. So is <laughs> what is the is there an extreme nutritional difference between eating the sprouted uh, uh, sunflower seeds and waiting for them to become little plants? So there's not like tons of research on the difference at, at every stage of growth at day three versus day seven. But in my opinion, it, you get you get a little bit more bang for your buck in terms of like when you let it grow a little bit longer because now it's got more green it's got more like mass right it's bigger and so it's just a little bit better in my opinion if you let it go a little longer but in like in the case of broccoli microgreens or something they might say that certain certain components of it might peak at like day three and then wane a little bit as it after that it, it, there's no clear answer to that i would say eat it the way you prefer what, what do you prefer, eat it the way you prefer thank you cool thank you eva and super thank you aaron put a one in the chat if you want aaron to lead classes <laughs> I know I'm going to put a lot of ones because then I don't have to. Just kidding. I love to do this for you guys. Okay. So um, let's move on from microgreens, but actually, okay, each particular sprouted variety, this is kind of explaining what we just were talking about, sort of. Each particular sprouted variety is composed of their own complex um, vitamins, minerals, and unique health enhancing co constituents. But one of the greatest benefits that all sprouts have in common is their high enzyme content very helpful for breaking down the foods we eat into usable nutrients and processing undigested waste material. Sprouted microgreens assist in activating the immune system and are cleansing to the body. Those high in chlorophyll are effective at removing toxin, toxins from the cells and lymphatic system. They are also high in dietary fiber, which promotes healthy bowel movements and intestinal function. Cruciferous vegetables have been linked to a long list of health benefits, including improved heart health, increased weight loss, reduced inflammation, regulating blood sugar, and fighting cancer. You guys got all that? <laughs> That's a lot, okay? And sometimes it sounds like what, what we're talking about. It's a, lot. it's a lot. So sometimes, you know, with what when we talk about these, it's it's like, what is this, snake oil? Like, like can it, how can it possibly do all of these things? But I think most of you who are here are amongst more of like the advanced, I would say for sure. And we understand that when you fuel your body with really high nutrient dense foods that are intended for our body, that are going to really uh, give it tons of vitamins and minerals and, and these enzymes that are good for um, activating the body that, and chlorophyll and all these things that their body is going to be fully nourished and be able to heal itself. This is the fundamental concept. And when the body is fully nourished and, and fueled, it, it, what it can do is limitless. Does that make sense? When the body is fueled, what it can do is limitless. I want that to really sink in because when I make these list of things of what the, what wheatgrass and microgreens do, and it sounds like this long list of bogus, it's not, it's really not. And when people come to me and they say, oh, I have this, does wheatgrass help with that? I have this, does sprouts help with that? And I almost always say yes. It's not because I just am, you know, speaking bogus lies. It's because there's nothing that's more powerful than these baby greens. Does that resonate with you guys? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, okay. I don't, I want to go over these things because this is super interesting, but I also want to go into recipes. What do you guys want? 
Should I go into these things or should I go into recipes? All right, let's go into recipes. We can deal with science later. All right, so pina colada brain smoothie. I've, I've said it a million times and I'll never stop saying it. It's my favorite recipe. Put a one in the chat or put a hi or a yes. I love the pina colada brain smoothie if you've had it. Um, and if you haven't had it, you gotta have it. Have it tomorrow. So it is a quarter of a pineapple. That sounds like a lot, but just trust me. Um, a half a cup of broccoli sprouts or, or microgreens um, that, or two ounces. Um, I usually use like an entire container of a perfect foods container of broccoli sprouts, broccoli microgreens to put into here. Um, also, okay, I know I keep using those two things in, interchangeably and we've talked about this before, but you will notice at the supermarket that there are broccoli sprouts and there are broccoli microgreens. So just to, again, bring this concept home, there's like Jonathan sprouts or um, like sprout man, different sprouts that you'll find in the supermarket that look like little tiny sperms. I hate to say it, but, and they look very different than these microgreens. So that, that is also a visual difference of what sprouts versus microgreens are. And I believe that the microgreens are much better, not only tasting, but for you. So anyway, get perfect foods. <laughs> um, so, uh, two ounces of broccoli microgreens, a quarter of a pineapple, a full pear that's nice and ripe. Always, of course, if it's ripe, it's nice and juicy. Um, I like to put ice in this because nothing of the fruit is frozen. If you were to use frozen pear or frozen pineapple, then you wouldn't have to use the ice, but the ice really makes the texture correct. And then about four ounces of water. You can use water, you can use coconut water. Um, I wouldn't use like an almond milk or something because it just doesn't go well with this, but I like to try and keep my smoothies really, really simple. Just a fruit or two, a green and a liquid. That's the boo. Oh my God. How embarrassing. I'm just trying to live my life here and I have to have my father embarrass me in front of all of my friends. Um, I'm not pinching you. I'm muting you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you never get away from family when you work with them. <laughs> um, okay, so who has had the pina colada smoothie? Let's see, did anybody respond? Jamie said yes. Eva said yes. Joy said both of you lead the classes together. Okay, fine. Aaron and I can lead a class together. All right. So this is definitely a hands down great one, by the way, everybody who's in this class, I don't know how you're going to get it because I didn't make you sign up for this class, but you are going to get this, um, uh, green smoothie recipe book. So hmm, you can put your email in this chat and then I'll, and I'll make sure that everybody gets it. If you put your email in this chat, I'll make sure to send it to everybody. Um, Paula said, how many ounces does that make? That's a good question. And almost always, I don't know how, but by magic, my smoothies usually make like 16 to maybe 18 ounces. Um, so a full, a full drink of, of smoothie. So it's a pretty solid, it's pretty much a one person meal. Okay. So red velvet, sweet smoothie. Um, this is a classic and you're going to see a trend here, but we'll, we'll let you figure this trend out. But, um, this is just frozen, frozen, a variety of different frozen fruit and microgreens and some liquid, the more frozen fruit that you put in, sometimes the more liquid that you need to put in just because you need to be able to blend it. If it's not frozen fruit, sometimes it'll blend with less liquid, but either way, more liquid is better because then you're, you can use that liquid as, as part of your hydration for the day. And we all know the equation for hydration for the day is half your body weight in ounces. Do you guys know that half your body weight in ounces is the amount of water that you should be drinking daily. Who knew that? I knew it. Well, I don't know. Okay. I'm going to put that in the chat. Me too. Good is how much water you should be having daily. And that is why these smoothies are great. Kim's like, I knew it. Um, <laughs> that's why these smoothies are great. Amanda, I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Because you should be having, like hydrating yourself is so important. And sometimes we don't want to just drink water. I know I have a lot of trouble with drinking water. So, um, having it in a smoothie form is counts as liquid, right? So if you're having 16 ounces of a smoothie, that also counts. So, um, frozen bananas, this is important. You're going to be in the world of eating healthy. Frozen bananas are your friend. 
how do you get frozen bananas? I don't know why, but someone, I don't know if Harley is still on here and Mr. Entrepreneur, but we must make a frozen banana line. It's the most simple concept ever, but frozen banana chips, I think, or full ones, because I don't know why, but I have yet to see that in the supermarket. Has anybody seen frozen bananas in the supermarket? I have not. Someone please tell me. I have. I Joyce, have. yes. Not in, regularly. In the food store. I think it's, uh, I'm trying to think um, what brand it is. I think it's, it's the one that starts with a C. Um, Cadia, C-A-D-I-A. They have frozen bananas. Okay, fine. Maybe. But I don't see it at ShopRite. I don't see it in big stores. Maybe. No, I haven't either. Here, Paul. Only in the health food store. I've oh, not seen bananas all by themselves. I see banana with strawberry. I think that's weird. Don't you think? Yeah. It's weird? How about banana whip, like you know, our frozen uh, whipped up banana in a container. I've I, not seen that. The only well, problem with that is that when it's not, once it's frozen, it doesn't taste the same, like fresh consistency. But anyway, <laughs> just the frozen bananas could be marketed as banana ice cream because. It's like, it's literally just bananas, but you put it in a blender or you put it in a champion juicer and it makes banana ice cream. Well, ice, ice cream is a legal word and, you, and, it, and it wouldn't qualify as ice cream. Uh, it's ice cream. You can call it an ice cream, yeah. I know, I'm just cream. saying. <laughs> yes, we're not allowed to use the terms of other products like mayonnaise, right? Like you can have vegan mayonnaise, but it's not vegan mayonnaise. Right. It's right? Vegan. <laughs> so Rebecca, can I contribute something? Quick. Short. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, something that I've, I've said many times, but I don't know who's on here. And uh, I think it's uh, very valuable, the following, that uh, time, time management is critical in this, in this program, especially if you want to continue to do it. In other words, preparing the foods that we're doing here takes a lot of time. And so anything that you could do to save time and make it uh, work more, e you know, more easily would be good. So I like to promote pre preparing relatively large amounts of things. So for, let's say, for, you know, for, for, for several days or even for a week. Now, smoothies are better, you know, are good to make and drink on the spot. But perhaps the ingredients for a smoothie can be made in, in a large amount, and then you could just put it out into, into the blender and, and, and make it into your smoothie. So just, just think in, in, in very general that anything that you could do to make uh, a recipe, if you could do it like six times more, and so you don't have to pull every item out and, and, and chop a little bit from each thing. It's just very time consuming. And, you know, a lot of people work yeah. and they just don't have the time. But when you go to these uh, institutes and they try to tell you what to do, they make it sound like nobody has anything else to do but this. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> so I'm telling you, see, so if, if, if for smoothies, if you could take the ingredients of, of a smoothie and put it into a large container and then just take it out, put it, put ice and whatever one, whatever one or two fresh items that have to go in at the last minute in there. Okay. That's okay. what I got for you today. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to go. Kind of, okay. Thanks. And that's okay, what I was coming at with the frozen bananas is that of course you should be using whatever um, overripe bananas you have any ripe bananas that go that are, are browning even to the point of no return in your opinion should are, are never of no return in my opinion, <laughs> unless they are like totally, totally smashed. But to me, <laughs> an overripe banana is a perfect banana for a smoothie. Um, and when you freeze them, I just put them in, in bags. You know, you peel, you have to peel them, of course, and then put them in bags. Um, but you might, you might slice them. I don't know. If it's overripe, you probably can't slice them, but yeah. So then uh, someone asked about our, our raspberries, pomegranates too seedy. You might find like a blend, like a frozen smoothie blend. 
I would say don't, if, if they have seeds in them, no, that's not, not ideal. It would have to be a pomegranate, not non without seeds, frozen pomegranates without seeds. Um, but yeah. And frozen cherries without seeds. So they have these, they have these blends, but that's, what's going to make it this beautiful, um, red velvety color. And then when you're figuring out what liquid you want to be using, um, I, if you don't have anything special, I use water and I love it for me. When you start adding in all these different milks and things, it gives it a little bit of like a, a different flavor and it doesn't taste like freshness. It tastes more like a, like a shake. And that's a total dependent on your, on your taste buds. But, um, yeah, experiment a little bit with it because it does make a difference in the in how fresh it is. Now you'll notice in the last two, I put broccoli and sunflower. These are the two greens that I really like to use for making smoothies. And you'll notice I don't really use um, pea shoots for smoothies or color mix for smoothies or radish for smoothies because they they just are really, they're stronger flavors. The pea shoots are, can make it taste a little bit grassy, but you can experiment with it and see see what you like. But to me, um, the broccoli and the sunflower are extremely mild. You can barely taste them at all. And they just make it taste fresh while the fruit enhances it and makes it taste really delicious and sweet. So yeah, any, if anybody has had these smoothies, please uh, share your feedback. Wow. And at the I end- the same for TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My TV's so cheap though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll only use it if I put it on this one, gotta be six morning mango smoothie. Um, again, just experimenting with different frozen fruits. So, um, mango, uh, coconut yogurt, you can use, you can have already pre-made coconut yogurt, um, plain of course, or you could have, uh, you can make coconut yogurt, which we actually have a recipe in one of our, in one of our, uh, meal plans, but that's a whole process. And in this one, I put a little bit of both sunflower and broccoli lime juice gives it a little spunk and then a date. If you want to get crazy, don't tell anyone. <laughs> yes, Harley. Yes. Hi. So I didn't leave yet. And as long as you got me here, and as long as we're talking about frozen banana, and as long as I'm probably the only one that knows what I'm about to tell you is the origin of frozen banana whip. Oh, my gosh. That's, I mean, do you, uh, kids, would you like to hear like a little history or you want to just continue to go over yeah. the rest? History, <laughs> history. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So, so I, I, I started in, in 1982. That's when I started Perfect Foods, growing and distributing fresh wheatgrass. There were not very many juice bars at the time. Uh, I mean, like a handful. One of them was Whole Foods not related to what to the national chain that we know on prince street in in uh soho and maybe there was like eight other health food stores that had like real juice bars only eight anyway one opened up sunrise natural foods opened up right on houston street which was not very far from the giant relatively big and 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 and, and probably the busiest health food store whole foods on prince street having all of Soho to, to themselves. Well, Sunrise opened up just a, a, a block or two away and they wanted to make a name for themselves. And they had, that's the first time I ever saw it. They had, uh, they took the bananas, ripe bananas, peeled them, froze them and put them through a champion juicer. Even the champion juicer hadn't been around for very long at the time. And nobody had seen this banana whip, as we called it. So that's where all of this frozen banana ice cream thing came from. And people started coming from all over the city to to get that banana because it smells great. It tastes great. It, 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 it has the consistency of ice cream. It has no nothing but banana in it. And then, of course, you could put other frozen berries and flavor and color it. And so that's the origin of Frozen Whip was at Sunrise Natural Foods. And uh, and I was there. That's pretty cool. And uh, we, at all the expos, like when was the first time that you did an expo and did banana ice cream? 
Well, it wasn't the very first expo, but after a couple, you know, there used to be like like the New Life Expo. There was like the Whole Life Expo. There was like several of those. There was a, a Health Map Expo. Uh, uh, different publications had their own, you know, retail health food people conventions. And we tried to go to all of them because we wanted to support the industry and we wanted to promote ourselves. And so to try to make you know ends meet and try to pay for the booth, we we actually used to make this frozen banana ice cream. And uh, the kids were very young. I mean, Re Rebecca, the first time she did that, she was just a little kid. And that's it. We assigned her to the job. We had to get dry ice to keep the bananas frozen because if they start getting anything less than frozen, they get sort of mushy. And then it's a messy business to 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 make the banana ice cream in the champion juicer continuously all day. So that's coming out of all the different places. And we had to keep the place, you know, keep it looking clean. The, uh, Rebecca, you remember that time when Eliana, she might've been like, I don't know, like 10. And she worked that thing all day. We were, so, we were shocked how strong she was because when we draw on the dry ice, it's frozen solid and it's hard to get it down. People go crazy for it because it's so good. So, and have put a one in the chat if you've had banana and ice cream and put a two in the chat if you've had it and you're now curious and want to have it. Um, just a little tutorial on how you can make this now that we've given it, we've hyped it up so much. There's two ways you can have it. One is through a, an easy way that is accessible to everyone through your Ninja, through your Vitamix. Just put it in. You're going to have to put a little bit of water. So it waters it down a little bit. It's not like pure banana ice cream, but it's a way to do it. And you'll just have to move it around a lot. And then you can, you know, scoop it out. I like to put some cinnamon on top and just eat it just like that. That's like midnight snack from beginning to end in a blender it takes like five minutes. But the so, so ripe, ripe bananas, peel them and freeze them, freeze them in such a way that they're not going to be all crushed on top of each other because they'll they'll kind of meld into a solid block, which is not good. So you put them in a Ziploc bag and loosen them up a little bit. So freeze them. You can take one banana out at a time. You can snap the banana in half if that's an appropriate portion for a large banana. That's too big sometimes. And then just leave, leave them in there frozen. And But the best way probably is to put it through a champion juicer. You may try putting it through an Omega or any of the single gear juicers. It kind of just grinds it up and squeezes it and pushes it out where the pulp would come out, not where the juice comes out. And it comes out just like like Carvel ice cream, smooth and, you know, a smooth consistency. And if you have good ripe bananas, it smells sweet and, you know, it's cool. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. And those of you who have been to my potlucks, like Amanda, I usually always serve it and have you do it yourself. So that's a little... <laughs> How do you how do you do it, Rebecca? I do, I do it with the champion. Yeah, Lisa wanted to um wanted to raise her hands and, and ask a question. No, actually I was applauding because I remember the first day I met your father and then I met you. So this is like monumental. <laughs> Thank you so much. When did you meet my father? Uh when before I even opened the CMOS factory, I was like scouting remember i have a machine i haven't even used my um wheatgrass machine yet i'm dying to use it okay so we got to get you to use your wheatgrass machine absolutely like tomorrow almost <laughs> wait which machine do you have the king or the queen the household one or the commercial one the commercial one okay so that's the big boy Okay, you have the king, the big boy. All right, so you're on Wednesday delivery. We'll get you for next Wednesday. Let's do it. Perfect, thank you. All right, thank you um, for sharing. Bye. bye from me. Thank you all. Take care of Rebecca. Okay, bye. <laughs> Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Okay, so let's get back to recipes. All right. Um, Hi. Did you go to the bathroom? <laughs> you never know what you're going to hear around here. Sorry. I'm okay. I'm okay with my, uh, my life right now. You need to go to the bathroom? 
Um, okay. So next time I'm going to make mandatory everybody to show it, show me your video so I can see what all of you guys are doing right now, because I'm sure that's very entertaining. <laughs> everybody is like in the car, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, who knows what you're doing, but thank you for spending your evening with us. Um, all right. So I'm sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, me. Really, it's really I'm good. always doing something weird. I'm always multitasking. I never get to do one thing at a time. Sorry. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the Perfect Foods family. I feel like yeah. that's a mantra that we all can agree with. Okay. So um, pre-workout smoothie. So this is a little bit of fresh versus uh, versus powder concept, but yeah, um, wild blueberries. We all know how wild blueberries are like uh, amongst the highest in antioxidants and good for the immune system and for autoimmune issues. And, you know, what's his name? Medical medium talks a lot about wild blueberries. So definitely getting the frozen wild blueberries in your freezer is great. Um, sunflower seeds and sesame seeds, sunflower uh, microgreens in sesame seeds are good for, um, progesterone and, and healing, uh, good for hormone health. I don't know if those of you are interested in, um, seed cycling or, or home hormone health generally for women, there's a concept of seed cycling and depending on your, um, phase of the month, you can use certain seeds in order to regulate or regulate your menstrual cycle. Um, if you're past that phase, but still having symptoms from menopause, then seed cycling also can help. So definitely something to look into and I can teach you all about. Um, but yeah, you can do a lot of seed cycling and hormone help with smoothies because it's a great way to get high, qu high quantity of seeds in. So um, it's just a great way to get high quantity of anything in is through a smoothie rather than having to munch on it. You can just throw it in and blend it up and, and you're getting it. So definitely look into seed cycling if you're interested in women's hormone health. Okay. Now a smoothie bowl. So you can do that just basically making that wild blueberry smoothie, but putting it into a bowl and then, you know, putting different seeds and sliced bananas and berries on top. This is something that I love to do. Um, I've been recently doing it a lot and yeah, it's still just a smoothie, but for some reason, having it in a bowl with seeds on top makes it more fun and feel like a real meal rather than like an on the go, something that you're just grabbing and rushing to have. So I can't recommend this enough. Um, this is a basic strawberry banana with sunflower. This is, um, getting a little bit more creative with hydration. If you feel like you're dehydrated or you need more electrolytes, um, putting celery into your smoothie definitely can help with that. Um, this is a mojito, even though mojito is normally with mint, but we put basil in there. Um, this is my Hippocrates green juice. Those of you who know, know, this is something that we recently started selling, not that recently, but we now sell this green juice already pre-made and frozen. So if you don't have the time to make it, this is the cream, creme de la creme of, of juice. It's like celery juice has become really popular for hydration and healing of the gut and everything. This is celery juice times hundred because you have half of this, half of the recipe is uh, microgreens quarter pea, a quarter sunflower, a quarter cucumber, and a quarter celery. And we have been slaving over making this juice for you guys. We can't keep it in stock because we love it so much. Um, you can make it yourself, of course, and get our greens, or you can get it already pre-made and, and frozen and keep it in your freezer. Just take it out, put it into a warm, warm bowl of water, and you've got yourself like the best green juice ever. That's a full meal replacement and makes you feel like you're kind of high, honestly, <laughs> that's the way I feel. I feel like I'm kind of buzzing and high on energy. And certainly my mood is brightened when I drink this juice. I can't speak highly, speak highly enough about it. Put it, put a, like a yes, or give me some feedback in the chat. If you've had this green juice and you like it, I'm just curious or unmute yourself. If you'd like to just curious if anybody has any feedback on this juice, because I can't speak enough about it. Um, Aaron, you this said liquid oh, gold. Sorry, this is liquid gold, to be honest. Liquid and gold. It's the only way I can get like the the pea shoots down. I don't particularly care for their texture. Um, but when they're juiced, I, I can get them in uh, from a nutrient standpoint. I, I like to, you know, mix it up. So the juice makes it easy to kind of get that in. 
Yeah. Yeah. When, when we had, when we make these juices, I'm always like, I don't know. I'm always surprised by how good they make me feel. And I'm also surprised that the frozen juice can also do that for you. Cause normally I think that it might not have the same kick, but the frozen juice that we make actually still does the trick. So, uh, Eloise said, I drink it every day. Joy said, I really like the Hippocrates green juice. Um, Paula said, so this is actually juice, not smoothie. That's correct. I just threw this juice in. Um, this is not a smoothie. This is a juice. I threw this extra recipe in for you. And Aaron, you said mm -hmm. only if intended for smoothies, they will not thaw for use in a salad. What did you mean by that? Did I say something wrong? Oh, is it okay to freeze microgreens and sprouts? That's why. Okay. Sorry. Joyce asked, is it okay to freeze microgreens and sprouts? And yes, the answer is only if it's intended for smoothies. Once you freeze the sprout, the sprouts or the microgreens and you thaw them out, they're just going to be mushy. You're not going to want that. So, but you can, th you can certainly freeze them. And I encourage you to freeze them to make smoothies later, because that's a really great way to make sure that if you overorder a little bit, you'll have it for later. Also for people who are outside of our region that want to order in bulk to save on shipping, that's a really great way to do it too. Just order in bulk, get a ton of broccoli, broccoli microgreens, freeze them, and then add them to smoothies later. Seriously. This is fun. Um, I invented this at a, at an expo where I run, ran out of wheatgrass and all I had was sunflower and pea microgreens left over. So I started selling sunflower and pea microgreen shots and everybody loved them. So I'm like, okay, so that's, that works too. If wheatgrass is a little bit too strong for you, you can juice the sunflower and the pea greens in a masticating juicer and, and, uh, drink it just like that. <coughs> um, Eva asked a good question. Can you juice them after freezing? This does not damage the live enzymes. Um, you can juice them after freezing. Yeah. It's going to not, it depends on your juicer. If your juicer will allow it to juice when it's completely frozen or not, but, um, Will it be exactly the same as it was when it was fresh? No, definitely something to experiment with. And I have juiced uh, frozen wheatgrass before, like the actual frozen blades in our King juicer, which is a stainless steel one. And it juiced really, really well and even had oxygen bubbles and was sweet. I was very impressed. So yeah, you can experiment with that for sure. Um, glowing skin. This is yeah, just hydrating yourself with celery for sure is good for glowing skin and different berries for antioxidants. Of course, sunflower greens, um, experimenting with different fruits that you like kiwi, pineapple, coconut water. Um, again, hydration with celery figs, um, figs are expensive, but they are really, really special. So if you can get your paws on figs every once in a while, I, I would recommend it. This is really just like that smoothie bowl, but with, uh, in, instead of a bowl. So you have uh, wild blueberries, frozen water. This is a good one. Hormone balance. Again, it's having that pumpkin seed and flax seeds, which would be on the first part of your period. If you're trying to balance your balance, your period. So again, looking at, um, seed cycling, but yeah, this is a good, a good one for hormone. I was doing this when I was seed cycling, trying to balance my hormones, for yeah, almost six months, I was doing a combination of this hormone balance one and the one that I had before, depending on which part of my cycle it was. Um, Radiant Love Smoothie, again, having those figs and strawberries, um, adding, adding avocado if you're trying to, I'm, I was going to say if you're trying not to lose weight, even if you're trying to lose weight, you can still use avocado. But if you're of the people who are really trying to make sure that you don't lose weight, um, you would add probably way more, maybe a full avocado. Um, to your smoothie. But if you're trying to lose weight, a quarter of avocado is certainly not going to do, certainly you'll still be losing weight, but just keep that in mind, adding a full avocado or adding nuts into your smoothies. If you're trying to not lose weight, um, is a really good way to do that. And then this is just a make your own recipe guideline. So you got your greens, you got your fruit blend, you got your blender and that's pretty much it. So <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I'm really, uh, beating this with a bat. Um, wheatgrass shot recipes, just throwing in some extra bonuses for you as far as recipe goes. Um, we've got our party shot, we've got our mild shot, our happy shot and our fire shot. So these are different ways that you can have wheatgrass. We always say to have wheatgrass on its own, but these are some fun ways to, to enjoy it with friends or if you have trouble with the flavor, just to get you excited about it and re-excite re you. So I like to, I actually like to take the shot of wheatgrass and then lick 
um, cinnamon after like a tequila shot just to cook because the, the cinnamon will really cut the flavor. The mild shot is putting a little bit of wheatgrass in with also a little bit of sunflower or pea greens or parsley, whichever. The happy shot is half wheatgrass and half pineapple. You might put a full ounce of wheatgrass and a full ounce of pineapple. And then the fire shot is with um, wheatgrass, ginger, and apple cider vinegar. This one's like really if you want to make a scene in your body. <laughs> um, is this, is this cool guys? Anybody want to, anybody interested in any of these shots? I'd love to put in, put in the chat, which shot you want to try the party shot, the mild shot, the happy shot, or the fire shot. Um, this is a classic, uh, reset cleanse salad that you'll find in one of our salads, um, in our cleanse program. So this will be with sunflower and broccoli microgreens, also pea. I don't know why I don't talk about pea or buckwheat or um, the color mix at all in here. I'm being very one-sided, but totally those other as well. Carrots grated, beets grated. Um, you got the turmeric sauerkraut over here and then a tahini dressing and um, some seeds on top. So this is a gorgeous, gorgeous salad that you should always have the sunflower and the pea on the side. Oh, here, there's, there is pea here um, on the side of everything. And then this is just a guide on how to grow the greens yourself. And of course, to do our cleanse and to follow us on all, all platforms. So that is my full class for you, my friends. I hope that was helpful. And thank you for staying for the whole time and even a little bit later. Um, just before we go, I want to do a little reminder that um, next week, we are going to have tips on how to stay plant-based long-term led by our very um, Jamie, who is here today. So if Jamie, you want to come on and say something real quick on that, you can, uh, no pressure. Um, and I really want to encourage everyone to make this community your own. Think about what it is that you want from these classes that's going to help you to be accountable and make changes in your life. And also think what you can share and what you can give in order to make this community thrive. Because certainly we need every single one of us to make a difference, not only in our own lives, but <laughs> I hate to say it, but make a difference in the world. Um, I think that the world certainly does need a powerhouse group of people who are being intentional about this from, from their true bottom of their heart. And it can start right here. So thank you all for being here. Seriously. Um, anybody want to? Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Feel free to unmute yourself and um, say anything that you would like to say. Say goodbye. Or if there's anything that you feel like you'd want to say. Otherwise, um, have a great night. And we will see you thank all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. You're very informative. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, Kosha, it's so great to have you. Uh, it's good to be here. I'm trying hard. <laughs> You're doing great. Thanks, Jamie, for coming too, and Kim and Eva, you got, and Estella. Y'all are my core. Yeah, no <laughs> um, yeah, and I'll think about this. Was a nice group of people. We had like eighteen yeah. people. Yeah. And all I did was send out a text message. So that was good. Imagine I'll try, to, I'll try to plan for like an hour, or maybe forty-five minutes, so that they have they have questions. You know, and I'll yeah. try to do some recipes, I guess, in in, in there too. Yeah, I would say even like, yeah, I would say 30 minutes to 45 minutes because I there's usually like 10 minutes where people are coming in and then a little bit of check-in and like regroup. So, uh -huh. and then plus time yeah. for questions and stuff. So, yeah. And and don't go too crazy, you know, like uh -huh. keep, it, keep it casual. I will organize my thoughts though. I definitely will sit down with intention this weekend and, okay. and have a plan. Beautiful. Sure. And maybe a couple of slides to talk to. Yeah. If you want to go over it with me, you're, you're more than welcome to, but if. Yeah, I'll flip it to you. Okay. Beautiful. All right. All right, everyone. Have a good night.
Thank you so much. Bye. Good night. Good night.